Next, we move on to some common terms encountered while setting up an IP system. The terms we will be briefly covering are the following. Static and dynamic IP, gateway and the router, NAT and port forwarding, and resolution, bit rate, and frame rate. There are two ways your network device can acquire its IP address, dynamically or statically. Dynamic IP denotes the use of a router or DHCP server to acquire an IP automatically. This can be as simple as connecting your camera to a router or internet modem. Static IP, on the other hand, is set up manually by the user and requires more steps in management. Since each device needs to have a unique IP, conflicts can occur if the setup is not done properly. Using a dynamic IP rarely creates IP conflicts, where a static IP can sometimes create conflict if care is not taken during setup. A drawback that dynamic IP has is that it can change over time. If the IP changes, the recorder will no longer be able to make contact with the camera. That is why static IPs are almost always used at the end of an installation. It is common practice that dynamic IPs are used for initial setup to establish communication with all cameras at once, then they are individually changed to static IPs to finalize the network setup. A router is needed when devices are used across different network types. Sending cameras on a local area network, or LAN, out to the internet is a common use for the router. This enables all devices on the LAN to share the same internet IP without the need to purchase a unique internet IP for each. The router usually consists of two separate IPs. Each is compatible with its respective network. In the diagram shown, the router has a gateway IP and an internet IP. The gateway IP is used for communications with devices on the LAN, where the internet IP is used to communicate with the outside world. The router also often acts as a physical firewall, a defense mechanism designed to block potential inbound attacks. When a computer on the internet attempts to gain access to the cameras behind or on the same LAN as the router, special rules must be created to allow that traffic. That process is called NAT, short for Network Address Translation, or Port Forwarding. To perform such routing of network traffic to a specific camera within the LAN, unique ports must be set up. In the diagram, as an example, a computer on the Internet attempts to access the router's Internet IP using port number 8080. Because the router's NAT was set up to route all traffic through port 8080 to a camera, it redirects the connection to the camera's port 8080. The resolution of the video is often used to describe the picture size in pixels of a digital video screen. It is usually measured in horizontal pixel count by vertical pixel count. There are generally four levels of video resolution. CIF is 352 by 240 pixels. VGA is 640 by 480 pixels. And D1 is 720 by 480 pixels. When the total number of pixels goes beyond 1 million, it becomes megapixel. The larger the picture size, the clearer and more details will be observed. Please note that digital resolution is separate from analog resolution, a measure in number of TV lines. Both types of resolution must be sufficiently high to achieve good clarity. The bitrate describes the data stream size in bits per second, or BPS. For the same type of compression, higher bitrate means higher picture quality, but also means higher bandwidth and storage space consumption. Between different types of compression methods, however, higher bitrate does not necessarily mean higher quality, but always means higher bandwidth and storage requirements. The two pictures show the difference between a higher bitrate and a lower bitrate. KBPS stands for kilobits per second. 